Hey everyone, I'm Bridget, and welcome back to our series on using remote containers in Visual Studio Code. In this episode, we're going to take a look at doing port forwarding using our remote container. So you may be wondering, what is port forwarding? So our containers are isolated environments, and in order to access a server, a service, or really any resource within that isolated environment, you're going to need to forward the port to your local machine, which is also known as the host. So in order to understand that better, let's dive into VS Code and take a look at port forwarding in action. All right, so here I am in my application and we can see that I'm in my dev container because the lower left remote indicator mentions that I am in my dev container and it's my Python 3 dev container. So let's go ahead and run it. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here. Oh, that seems like a pretty good size. I'm gonna say python app.py. All right, and immediately we can see that we are notified that our service is running on port 5000. And so that's pretty neat. It was done automatically for us. And I'm curious, so I'm gonna say see all forwarded ports. And so we can see over here in the remote explorer viewlet, um, VS Code is gonna tell us all of the ports that are forwarded. And if I expand this here so that I can get a bit of a better view, um, we can see that 5000 is the port um, that our service within our container is using. So 5000 is the port that our application, our Python app is running on. And then that was forwarded to this location on our host or on our local computer. So we're going to be able to actually access our Python app at this address. And so if I click this globe icon, I was also able to interact with that notification before that had popped up. I'll be able to go ahead and view our application. So I'm going to go ahead and say open in browser. And now that we can see that our app successfully loaded and it was forwarded to this location on our host machine. And we can see that all of our data was properly loaded and it's as we would expect. So we can see here that the numbers actually match between the ports. Um, so the port of the application that's running within our container is 5000, and that was forwarded to port 5000 on our local machine. But that doesn't always have to be the case. We could actually forward to a different port if we wanted to, or if port 5000 was currently occupied on our local machine by a different service, um, then we would uh, forward to a different port. So maybe to 5001 or to a completely different number. And if we wanted to change that, what we could do is go ahead and right click here and we can see we have a few different options and we could say change local port. Um, so for instance, new local port, we could say 5001 and we can see now that the port in the container is still going to be 5000. But now if we go into our browser, we would instead access our application at port 5001 on our host machine. So now in the browser, actually, if I refresh here, um, port 5000 on my local machine is no longer being used. But if I update, update it to port 5001, we can see that's where my application is now being forwarded. Now, when we're done running the application, we want to make sure that all the ports stop being occupied. So what we can do is in our terminal, I'm going to say control C and then our app is no longer running, and we can see that in the ports view over in the remote explorer, um, the port is no longer being occupied, so it's no longer being forwarded. Um, and we're again told that we could forward a port if we would like to. You can also access forwarded ports beyond just the notification that we had pop up earlier and beyond just this ports view in the remote explorer. So if I open up the command palette with control shift P or command shift P, I can say forward a port, and that'll also allow me to work with my forwarded ports or go ahead and forward a port with my application. Thanks for joining me today to learn about port forwarding with dev containers in Visual Studio Code. In the next video, we're going to check out customizing your editor and project settings, so be sure to check it out.